we're exploring a dialogue. So I have no idea how that works practically in a way that is organic, appropriate, and mutable, and slightly elapsing in its tendrils of jellyfish like stinging digression. As you can tell, I'm trying to free will an idea that has no legs. So, what I'm trying to say is that uh, allegedly, as a continuation of this wonderful. Uh, exhibition and the work that she has put into the um, beautiful museum. Uh, we're just going to read in the style that sort of seems slightly, we're not cool in response, but I think we're still going to talk and add the things. Yeah, I mean, we've not, we've just met each other as well. So. Yeah, we go with that. Back in, back in that room, yeah, the sparks are flying. Yeah, you can tell. It's so, um, Appropriately, the first one is called Starting To, so it's a short poem uh, near the beginning of the notes. Uh, Starting To. Snow, feathered, air, sleeping, in aspirin, the sky is dreaming of where wistful motors touch, sliding on the tongue. Just know that my eyes were on you the whole time as I juggled myself in separate boxes, untrackable, uncatchable. You never moved once except for your eyes, which followed my legs, head, and chest, sad, bemused. Stay still, please, you'd say. Don't look at me like that, I'd think, as I built collapsing staircases beneath you. That's well, maybe I should follow on then with another one about a different girl, an older girl. Um, this one's called The Rains. Each raindrop contains a soul, I'm told, and sleet is naught but the urgent need of the dead to meet their loved ones once more in the mortal world, to stroke their skin, to leave a living trace, a teardrop, a thin, translucent meridian. My grandmother never used an umbrella and would tip back her head and eat the rain. She said it made her feel alive again. Can you eat rain? Yes. Not In more of a like a snow thing? Yeah, you can eat rain. It's a sort of thirst quencher, you know, an yeah. appetizer. So mm. move on to yeah, the, the more hardcore weather systems. Yeah, yeah. I think the last paragraph is absolutely beautiful. This, this week, I helped my mum into residential care and that emotion of her having joy taking her hair back and being in rain, I think that was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And that was a lot to me actually because I've been through a lot of pain this week but that really, it was about the loss of youth and the joy of nature. Yeah, it's freeing yourself in it yeah. I think as well, beautiful. giving yourself up to it, it's yeah. part of it. Yeah, I'm glad you got something from it. in a way that seems sort of to trample the democracy of the dialogue. What I was planning to do was read this sort of slightly more monologue and then retreat apologetically and allow the dialogue to kind of coalesce into a tsunami. Oh, I have directions between you. Is that, is that okay? Or would that sounds right. <laughs> because I also feel like with that being quite a almost cinematic, evocative last image, this one's more a kind of tremulous, mess so that maybe that could be a little passage before we come back to something that we don't know. Um, so this is called Can I Catch an Audience of One, which I hope not to reduce the audience to that level. But um, so bear with me, it's a little bit longer, but I will do my best to get through it in an acceptable time. In a captive audience of one. We are managing a smile. We are sorry for the noise next door. We are the noise next door and we are listening. We are mess and we are terror. We are headlines, misread lines and headstones. We are forecasts of billiard balls. We are vending tongues and heirlooms. We are pretending with our napkins. We are Wi-Fi buried in newborn bones. We are the lower ilium and never learn. We are lost and due to arrive soon. We are white and male and middle class. We are not, we are not a surprise. We are not, not a surprise, not intention. Through the day we are suffering from neck ache. All eyes and ineffectual acupuncture. I try, 
I try to glue gun sequence to my pupils. I try to, but I cannot keep. I cannot keep my eyes open. Cannot fool myself. I scold myself. I curse. I think. I think of staples. We are canonized for herding drafts of air. We are soluble in time. We are exhausted by what we might be when what we are imagines we might be. We are, are we? Drawn by impatient, godly strokes of pen, diagnosed as clinically depressed, justifying obsolescence, regaling our own impressions of living with how it felt to live, and so building a life from living through impressions of how it felt to live regaled from living. We were heavy. The privilege, the toxic transparency of being us, closing our hands around the nettle. We were, when it mattered, absent. I say these things in the voice of someone I imagine someone might want to read. That's where I go, someone that like we were advocates of sleep above all other partisan investments. We sounded obnoxiously familiar. We were used to being told that it was the taking part. We were taking part of being told we were used. We were overwrought with reservations, but met up just the same. We were ethically compromised, so talked over others, lest others eloquently compromise us. We were better in the movies, true to our word, which by then had lost its currency, dressed from head to toe in variations of skin. We were always buffering, and in always becoming, became new age karaoke stars among the coma patients. We shudder, and nothing changed changes, we were at best hesitant when the cows came home, pacing in the waiting room, dreading the results, choosing a colour for the blinds, how it felt to become increasingly suspicious of dairy products. I am as if but insist otherwise, I bluster this, dress smoke and piss stitched into spoken for, my only phrase of course it's bluff deceitfully apportioned. We were told to remember the economy of expression, but after the recession, this advice has been withdrawn. We suckle sturgeon and pretend not to notice the sound of rioting. We are the plain view, and view plainly you, as nothing else than the ants at our picnic. This is not us, we know this. We were never even at the picnic. We bought in excess of five scotch eggs, but still we did not go. The compassion of our doting mothers furnished us with rolled blankets, pickled onions, and exhaustive recommendations regarding sites of outstanding natural mediocrity. We did not leave the house. We drank tepid reticence from a flask. We stood in doorways questioning our position. You were there, slowly opening your mouth to reveal a key sleeping flat upon the tongue. You knew what it was we did not know, and we, as you well know, could never know what it was we did not know. Pity us. We will nod, we'll pass, we'll nudge with puffed eyes sealed and dance for your acceptance. We will degrade ourselves with tambourines. We will invent toil and painstakingly upholster entire mythologies to lay the carpet at your feet. I want to be you at a distance. I write you every day, signed with such cowardice we met. We met with little but ourselves. We met little but we. We met ourselves, little but the noise next door and listening. All right, well, what better to follow but another really short one? <laughs> um, it's the throat clearing routine. I would like to marvel at the man who is unafraid to earthquake bathroom walls, like a chair being dragged across a floor or a bear with a football rattle. He drags up from the pit of him all of life as if to scream the scream he knows I know exists inside him, but would never ask directly to see. He shows me on cold mornings in his flat, his city at 6 a.m. before my train back to my city that he is not afraid by wrenching from his well every argument and unsaid thing between us. He mixes them with our spit, coughs into the sink. Um, in the magazine, I've got a few poems which are based on dreams um, and night terrors as part of a series which kind of explore the weaving in between and sometimes you can't quite tell the difference. And there's a couple of dream ones which I'll read. Um, I'll save one till after, but I'll start with one um, which is Night Terror 27, The Bed. I awoke in my bed, a giant lolling tongue, fat with blood but curling dry its scalloped edges, clam like. I sit up groggily, intending to rise but the tongue reacts and comes alive, curling back on itself from the tip, turning me into a somersault flicking me headlong into the veined purple gullet in the bedhead. All tense, I spread swelling fingers either side of the puckered velvet, resisting the sucking from deep, fleshy gulps, 
opposing and clenching in furious peristalsis. I stand on hands until my will melts in the steaming heat and the weight of me collapses in, hands folding into a swan dive. I am consumed, face first, and then squeezed from the tract, and I'm in the schoolyard, fat, bare-breasted, and then there's this bell ringing through my left ear to my right, staying my left as if a wasp hissed within. My mother, robust as Popeye, folds me, light as paper, and squeezes me into a satchel. I settle, stroking the leathers, the wet leathers of a clutching stomach or womb. I shrink within it, willingly, swooning in the most wondrous sensation, curling my palsy frame around a bulbous head, swooning in the red light, falling asleep to the rhythm of a thunderous heartbeat, safe and out of sight. I've got one more uh, little one called Morph, uh, which again has got quite an appropriate pitch and that's The pictures were weirdly inappropriate. Like, inappropriate. Inappropriate, sorry, not Yeah, I, it's almost like someone's planned it out. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think there would be art to suit what I'd written, but there really is. Oh, it's lovely this. You should buy one, it's great. <laughs> I got mine for free for a minute. <laughs> Love. Having found the real thing, I opted for the imaginary. I picked apart the stone castle I had stumbled upon with its comfortable four posters and incredible views, and decided instead to inhabit a cloud. The views were better. I was dimly aware that I was falling. Mm. What's that? Okay, well maybe I'll finish with a bit of a awful dream. Probably not as awful as the other one actually. Okay. So this one's in the magazine as well. Um, it's called Dream 14, The Egg. In my dream, I bought an egg to relive a childhood pleasure, to dip in. But there were so many other chores to do in that moment. Packing my bags, dusting away a matrix of web, and my kitchen had stretched to a banquet hall. Candle lit and murky with my father's antediluvian wares. So full up with my multitasking was I that the egg was forgotten and it stewed in its broth, bone dry. Undeterred, I stored it for tomorrow's brunch, a protein hit, and lay another one to boil, but didn't reset the timer and spent far too many minutes doing the math between the time I started and when I lapsed and adding up all the spiders still mapping the floor like unstable constellations, so I forgot the time I started at. And on investigation, the egg had cracked and was losing out a galaxy, a vortex of clouds. Yet again, I settled to make another, but the room flickered dark and contracted to the tunnel of a ghost train, the black flanked by my husband, my mother, both decreeing that they decide my dinner, and I'm breathing in wisps, <coughs> surrounded by clusters of grotesquely spoiled eggs, all peppered by stratums of dust. And then I wake. I want to ask in the poetry that you've written, if you had to sum it up in like two or three emotions, how would you describe it? I mean, these ones, these ones are, are pretty consistently about loss for me, yeah. and um, uh, less than satisfactory self-realization. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always the phone ring. Just keep that sweet list. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, Imagine. I guess for me, it sort of fits with the theme of the exhibition. That it kind of is about knowledge and how how you take in information and digest it for yourself. Whether it's when you're asleep, or you make up myths for yourself, or you yeah. make up ways to connect to the world. So I guess for me, that that's what connects. But that, that, in a sense, connects everything that we might write, we'll say. It's just trying to understand something and trying to talk through the situation, I guess. Like lots of um, I'd say mainly, so the, the, the first one I wrote is quite a peaceful poem, um, to my mind anyway. Um, and I'm not really sure how 
where I begin <laughs> describing emotions for it. it. It was written a very long time ago. Um, but the other longer one is, I think, quite clearly more a sort of neurotic, um, <laughs> sort of agitated but playful as well, and that kind of tension between uh, something being obsessive and uh, distracting and upsetting, but also the dynamic of that movement being something that can be very playful as well. And that is something I'm very drawn to in, in playing the language. Is play. That's it. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, Shader, for making a beautiful. Woo,